Good morning. I'm going to try to do a little video. So this is my lockdown here. I was supposed to get a haircut in April. And that didn't happen. Uh, it's not a Bob Ross afro, but it'll do. That's what I have. <clears throat> so what I've got here is 11 by 14 canvas. Nice blank canvas. We love a good blank canvas. This is the scene that we're going to paint. And I put this picture along with two other pictures on Facebook. And this one kind of edged out the rest of them just slightly with a little uh, a like vote and a comment vote. Well, thanks everybody for voting on that. <clears throat> and what I have on my palette, I've got some phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, <clears throat> excuse me, yellow ochre, and some cadmium yellow light hue. Now these are Winton, Windsor & Newton Winton uh, brand paints. They're student grade. And the student grade just means that the pigments may be not as good as some of the other pigments and there might be fillers in it. I like to start my paintings off with the student grade painting, paints and then finish them up with the more professional grade paints. <clears throat> now the funny thing, get out of here, cool. my dog is bugging me. The thing about this thalo blue is thalo blue is normally supposed to be like a real green blue, uh, pretty yellowish warm blue. And this one is, for whatever reason, they, the pigment they use is leans more towards a, a neutral or even a purple. It doesn't have near the, the green hue that a more expensive thalo blue has like, like the Grumbacher. So it makes a decent purple. <clears throat> All these colors are sort of on the dull, earthy side, except for the cadmium yellow. Uh, and that comes in handy for doing an underpainting. Now, when I start a painting, generally I start it off the same way. And I'm going to look at the picture, and I'm going to divide it up into the background, including the sky, of course. And then maybe the mid foreground, and then the extreme foreground. And I'm going to block everything in, generally, on these big masses and colors and shapes. And then once that dries a little bit, we can start adding in darks. And then once that dries, we can add in some lights. So it takes some time, but it's a, it's a good formula, if you will. So first thing, I'm going to dip my brush in mineral spirits, and I'm going to dig into this phthalo blue, and I'm going to start at the top, and just make a strip across the top and work it down. And all I'm trying to do at this point is fill... Get some color on the canvas, kind of fill in these weaves on this thread with some color. Maybe establish some mid-tones. And while I'm at it, right about here, about, oh, roughly a third of the way down, I'm going to establish my horizon line. And that's where the water will be. So now I've got some blue, Let's see. So I've left this chunk open right here to leave room for this tree right here. And then there's gonna be more patterns. Even though there's a lot of trees here, there's still uh, bits and pieces of sky and background showing through. I'll straighten that out a little bit. Alright, 
this point, remember, it's just an underpainting. Okay, maybe a little bit more blue in the sky. So this is very thin paint right now. It's thin with, with uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner or turpentine or whatever I happen to be using at the moment. It's almost like paint with watercolor right now. Before the sky is dry, before I block in the rest of it, I'm going to take my brush and dip it in, just kind of load it up with titanium white. I'm going to start at the bottom. You know how you look at a sky and the bottom has more white or is more pale towards the horizon and you look straight up and it might be like a beautiful pure blue and that's because there's more atmosphere in the sky when you look towards the horizon more humidity more more pollutants maybe even depending on where you live uh, if you're in the southwest this area down by the horizon might even have a yellow or an orange or a red hue to it So now I've got this, this blue, and I'm putting this white on here, and the white is picking up pieces of the blue. And we're just kind of spreading it around. And it's kind of thin. I might have should have let it sit for just a little bit longer, but here we are. I'm going to take this bigger brush. It's a very soft brush. It's a dry brush. I don't use this for anything but blending so I can keep it clean and good shape. And I'm just going to blend this. Maybe blend it down like so. And then across. pretty happy with the way the sky looks there's not going to be a whole lot of sky showing through maybe we can put in some streaky clouds get more white out just to add a little interest to that sky just a little bit but we're not really going to focus a whole lot on the sky because there's a lot going on in this painting and we don't want to make it too darn busy and really we don't even have to so I just streaked some white in there, made some streaky little sky, uh, little clouds, and then I'm going to blend them like so. There. take this I'm gonna look at this again I'm gonna get some darker color and I'm gonna start blocking this stuff and first I think I'm gonna block in this area here because it's a little bit lighter and I want to get that in before I dirty it all up <clears throat> there's a little bit of beet showing down here I want to get that in there too so let's go with a little bit of this lizard crimson and a little bit Shh dogs whining and a little bit of yellow ochre and we're just going to block in the shape of that tree and once again we're just wanting to get color And we'll get a few more of these trees over this way.
And there's some yellow right here. Some more greenish. Once again, just putting color in. Just getting things started. And while I'm here, I'm going to mark my foreground. And we're going to have a path come up like so. I'm going to do the darks and I'm mixing this phthalo blue with the alizarin crimson. That's going to make a really, really dark purple. And I'm going to try to keep a little on the blue side for now. And you can see this tree. Oops, sorry. I'm going to get this tree way up here. I'm going to start that in. We're going to work our way over, do this. I think I'm going to leave this part out for now because I want to do the island. We'll get that put in a little bit later. Maybe I'll establish some of these darks down here. So way up here it starts. And we're just worried about basic shapes and layout. We're not worried about details at this point. We can come back and put that in a little bit later. Pretty rough at the moment. Put more red in there. Cool. Oh, sorry guys. I got this tripod set up right next to me here. I knew that was going to happen. Sorry about the glare here. More branches up here. There's some branches right along here. I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow in here. Warm it up a little bit. Make it look kind of nice. There will be a tree trunk here, and another one here, and another one here. A little bit later on, 
I want to finish. I got to put the island back here. This needs to come up some. I want to finish the water a little bit. Some better blue. Maybe more tree trunks in here. Okay, now let's establish. I'm going to get these shadows down here. in my foreground. Okay, and then we're just gonna get a little bit of blue and some yellow ochre and some of the cad yellow to warm it up a little bit. And just get this grass in here and it's kind of dark. It's a little darker than it's gonna be the end and that's okay. Some grass here. Mm. I want to pick up some of that shadow color that I put just put in and let it mix a little bit and mingle and same here. Work on this trail real quick. I gotta finish this here. Get that in there better. Okay. Remember, there's a beach right here. I don't want to finish that part just yet. All right. And we're gonna put the trail in. So now I have, except for the beach, I'm going to get that beach in there, don't I? So for that beach, I'm just going to take a little bit of this titanium white and the yellow ochre and a touch of, a touch of that purplish color just to dull it down a little bit. And we'll just slap that in there. Maybe I need more, a little bit more red. over that way too. Some of it's carrying through. I'm blend this. Smooth it out. Soften it up. that sit and dry but before I completely stop at this point I want to put the little island in and this is little Presque Isle and for those of you who have live around here you probably have seen little Presque Isle maybe even been to it you used to be able to go out there you could wade through the water and it got up to maybe your thighs maybe uh, maybe midway and you used to be able to go out there and there was nobody else out there to bother you. Maybe a couple other people here and there. And now you go out there and there's all kinds of people. <clears throat> In fact, some couple people have even 
drown going out there. In recent times. And that didn't used to be. I think the, the water level has risen. And maybe there's some different... Uh, there's some different currents that didn't used to be there. It's a little bit deeper. But when I used to go out there, you couldn't. It would be very difficult to drown out there because it was so shallow and it was just it was an easy walk through the water to get there. Now that it's more dangerous, more people are going. So I've taken mostly the titanium blue. I put in a little bit of yellow ochre to make it green but then I came back and I put in a little bit of alizarin crimson to neutralize it because when things are far away they're more blue or gray and it kind of depends on the atmosphere and one of the things that I really like doing and people tell me I'm good at is depth and creating depth in my paintings and this is how I do it so I have squeezed out a little bit of my Grombach or Thalo blue which like I mentioned earlier is brighter more more of a greener tone than the phthalo blue I started out with. I'm going to do a little bit down in here. So I've got that better quality phthalo blue with some titanium white. And I'm just going to lighten this up. Right along here. I'm going to start here in this water. I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot because not a whole heck of a lot of this water is going to show through the final painting because of all the trees and whatnot in the foreground. But I'm going to do enough so that there's a nice body of water back there and you know that water is back there. I don't want it to look cheesy and cheap. I'm going to blend this horizon line better here. Oh, shit. Sorry. Well, I screwed that up, didn't I? All right, that's all right right there. All right. All right, we're good again. I think I'm going to put a tree there anyway because I've got that bunch of branches so there's going to be a tree trunk right here so you won't even notice that screwed up spot right there. So I'm just wiggling the brush back and forth. Get the paint in there. Kind of these horizontal strokes, um, maybe making it look a little like like ripples or waves uh, far in the distance. And a little bit here, but I gotta be careful not to grab some of that junk again. I almost should have finished this water before I put the foreground in, but that's okay. So placement of these trees isn't going to be the final placement of it. I kind of forgot to mention that earlier. These, these trees are going to kind of encroach. They're going to be built out from here to here. So as I paint this water, I'm leaving myself a little bit of space around the existing trees so that I can build those out. Now I've got a little bit of the, the, the really bright cadmium yellow and I've mixed it with some titanium white and I'm going to put some of that blue in it. That's going to make a really nice 
like a mint green and anybody who's been to Lake Superior especially this part of it knows that when you look down the water there's gorgeous gorgeous green tint to it it's like it's almost like a green light down at the bottom of the of the water closer you get to the beach the more green it gets rounded like a filbert it's a big one inch filbert and it's a nice dry brush there's no paint on it at all and I'm gonna blend this out it's like so Now I've got this angled brush and it's very thin and it's kind of small and it has that angled tip. This is one of my favorite brushes. If I was ever going to be stuck on a des deserted island with only with a paint set and only one brush, I would choose a brush like this because you can do lines with it, you can do points with it, you can do wide things with it. It's a nice versatile brush. And I'm just going to put some ripples in the water. Not too many because it, it's a pretty calm day it looks like. And I'm just putting in kind of staggered horizontal lines. And this is this is that blue again. And then I'm gonna take the flat part of it and blend these in a little bit. So this is where the water swells. There's a point where the water swells and you can see through the bottom, that's what the green is. And at the top of the swell, all you can see is pretty much other water or whatever is behind it maybe, and that's where this blue is. And now I'm gonna take the titanium white again and the same blue that I used in the sky It's kind of in between the waves where it's flat, it'll reflect the sky again. So I'm just going to put more little ripples and waves. Just kind of make them recede back into this part and sort of disappear altogether. something a couple more waves back back here a 
Beautiful smiles way in the back here. Sort of receding and then disappearing into the background. there. What do you think? Maybe a little more. A little more white and blue. A little more right here. Just, just some touches. Just make it sparkle. I think I like it. Okay. That's that off. Mm. So I was looking down here, and this is really kind of way too cool. I want to. I want to lighten some of this up a little bit. There's more green down here. I want to put in there and this is still this is just so preliminary that you know, a lot of this can change but it's really it's nice to have a good background a good place to start a good foundation I guess if you will I'm just adding some color and then I want to warm this up where this grass is. I just put some yellow ochre on it. And we're going to do the same over here on the other side of the path. So I'm going to make this path going to come out curl around go down this hill uh, we're up on a hill looking down like the beach is like 20 feet down or something like that and there's all these trees that kind of step down and this path came up the hill and around and then right here so that's what I'm going to try to make right here is this path is going to curve around here and come out And of course, it's not a manicured path. It's just worn in by people walking on it, so the edges are not going to be even. You're not going to have hard lines. You're going to have little blend marks. So I'm going to light up the path a little tiny bit while I'm here, too. Okay. All right. Let that sit for a little bit longer and we'll come back and we'll put some trees in. Okay, I'm going to put these some of these trees in the foreground and uh add some darks here and there. This is kind of the fun part. It's the part I look forward to. So, I used to be a pretty prolific knife painter. And it comes in handy now even when I'm using my brushes. So what I'm going to do is take a big blob of alizarin, alizarin crimson. A glob of the uh, phthalo blue. Mix that together. I'm going to take a touch 
of yellow ochre just so that it's, it kind of grays it down and <clears throat> so I'm mixing almost a black very dark purple <laughs> sorry dogs are fighting so uh, I got this very very dark purple almost black okay and what I'm gonna do is take my big black blotch and flatten it out and then cut into it with a knife so that I've got a little bead of it right here and for all you Bob Ross fans this is actually a Bob Ross trick and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to figure out where I want this first tree to be and it's going to come down right along here like so that's why I've got these tree branches right here And I'm just going to make a tree trunk right there like that. And I'm going to decide where this next one is going to be right here. And of course I'm not just deciding this out of the blue because I've got my photograph that I'm working with. And this trunk is going to extend down between you and the beach. There's going to be another trunk here. And then another one here. Like so, right there. Maybe a little bit of the trunk there. All right. I'm gonna wipe off the excess here because that's gonna be dark. I'm gonna wipe off some excess over here too. Keep that dark. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I've got this it's like a quarter inch Gilbert round tip brush. And all I'm gonna do now is take those lines that I made and kind of spread them out. the tree trunk. Same with this one. Now this one happens to be a little wider. wider. painting tree trunks you got to remember that they taper they're not straight up they're not straight up and down they start off thicker on the bottom and get thin as you go up So this process, somebody described it well, one of my friends, Alan, <clears throat> described it as, as 
painting really loosely but tightening up as you go along and that's really what I'm doing. It started out very loose and as I get going my brushes get smaller and smaller the details start to come out. And the painting develops. Okay. <clears throat> So, I've been thinking about I've been thinking about this tree right here. This dead one. I've been thinking maybe I would leave it out. <clears throat> or maybe I should put it in. And I think I've decided I'm going to put it in. I was thinking about that last night. <clears throat> so this area this is on top of a hill and Behind you, as you're viewing, is an open field, and if I remember right, there's a chimney there. A chimney and a fireplace, because there used to be a cabin here. And I don't know whose cabin it was. I don't know if it was a state cabin, if it was a private cabin, maybe a, like a ranger's cabin or something like that. Um, maybe my friend our, uh, uh, Tyler Tischler or Jim Kosky can let us know about that cabin, but... At any rate, there was a cabin up there. And I thought that that old dead tree that's there, maybe that dead tree was just a sapling when that cabin was built. And then it grew and grew and grew, and now the cabin's decayed and the tree's decayed, and I thought it might be kind of a nice part of the story of this painting to leave that old dead tree there. But i got to put it in. So I'm going to do... Very much what I did with these trees. And I'm just going to start it here. And it goes way into the sky. And then it splinters off. And I think I'm going to probably bring that tree out, maybe highlight that tree a little bit more as we go along. Even though it's not in the photograph that way, I think it would be kind of neat to give this tree just a little bit more, a little bit more of a story, a little bit more of a part in this. And I'm going to take that really thin chisel brush again. I'm just going to bring this, give this some shape. Refine this a little bit. And this isn't anywhere near done, this tree. I mean, there's lots more to do to it. I forgot to smooth this out too. Some branches in here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to take this brush. Take this brush. Yeah, that's it. So this is just a cheap flat brush, like a half inch or something like that. And when I bought it, I kind of roughed it up. I took some scissors and I cut it at an angle so the, the tip of it is really kind of rough. And I'm going to use this. I'm tap it straight down into my dark paint. Like that. And I'm going to start bringing out some of these darks. And this is called stippling. And 
what this does is it establishes the dark patterns in these trees. In some of these places I had wiped off the excess paint right on the painting instead of on my palette or on a rag and so I can come back and reuse it. Don't want to waste. I'm going to work on this a bit. I'm going to do some of the foreground too. Some of this grassy part. And with the grass, I'm kind of hitting it and coming down, hitting it and coming down. Same with right here. And this is going to start to give this land a little bit of shape. But now you're looking into the shadow of the grass, and the grass is growing perpendicular to the way the land is shaped, more or less, right? When I'm doing the trees, I'm punching it straight in. I'm going to work on this for a bit and get back to it in a little while. I skipped ahead a little bit. And now I'm coming back just to show you how I've done and at what point I'm at. So when I get up into these, these pine tree, the red pines, um, I'm kind of taking the tip of this nasty old brush and, and just kind of giving it a flick like so. And that's nowhere you're done. But this is where the darks really start to, to take over and give it some form and give it some flavor and some tone and some, some shape and you can kind of see what I'm getting at. And I think probably, probably tomorrow, maybe even later today, I'll uh, let this set up a little bit, this dark stuff, and we'll come back and we'll put some, some mid-tones and some highlights in this area here. And then that'll pretty much be done. But then these, these trees here are going to need more detailing. This tree is going to need more work. And there's lots to do down here on this uh, on this foreground. The foreground, I, I kind of save the foreground for last because, well, it's in the foreground. And uh, that's where the most work is. Because you have to make it look really good. You now you can put that blob in there and say, there, that's an island, and everybody knows it's an island. But this foreground, you know, I want this grass to look good. I want this, I want this trail to look like it's dirt with rocks in it. And it's going to have pine needles on it because of all these bloody red pines all over. So we'll come back to this. Uh, thank you for watching so far. All right, well, I lied just a little bit. <clears throat> I didn't mean to. But I said I was going to wait for all this dark stuff to dry before I added some mid-tones and highlights. And I was, I was partly correct. I want to add the mid-tones while the dark is still wet because I want it to blend a little bit. So I'm going to start with, with this tree here, this colorful tree here. And I'm mix, mixing uh, my yellow ochre with my alizarin crimson and then a touch, touch of the cadmium yellow. So I have kind of a kind of an earthy dullish orange. And I'm using that 
that messed up brush that I showed you earlier that I did this all this dark with. And I'm going to tap that color in. Now don't worry about that. We'll fix that later. This, this isn't nearly done. I'm going to let these, these little leafy parts kind of extend into the over the water, over the foreground, or the background rather. And then as they get closer to the dark parts that I put in before, we're just going to let those kind of tap together and blend together so it looks like the light is fading into the dark. And we're going to carry this over here. There's a little bit, uh, another tree with the same same or similar color over here. I'm going to get that in there. I'm going to get some down here. As we get towards the bottom, we'll just kind of keep tapping back and forth until we get sort of a nice, not really a blend, but they kind of optically blend like you would see out in the woods when the dark leaves and the light leaves are sort of starting to come together. And pretty good. Now, there's other leaves out here. Now this was, uh, took this, we took this hike, my wife and I. It was like the, one of the last nice days in the fall. So there was still green leaves and there was some starting to change like this here. And it was kind of the in-between. It was, the weather was beautiful. It was warm. There were people on the beaches and people walking around all over and so you're going to have different degrees of, of leaf foliage color, different, uh, you're going to have some greens, you're going to have some reds, but there were still a lot of green leaves. So I'm just going to drop some of those greens in here. Towards the end of this, or maybe not even towards the end of it, but a little bit later on, we'll put uh, we'll put highlights in here, and it'll just make this bloody thing sparkle. So see, I'm tapping this fresh color in, sort of on top of the stuff that's already here. The stuff that's already there is not quite dry. Some of it's starting to set, stiffen up a little bit, but for the most part it's, it's still pretty wet. So we're able to get these variations between the, the mid-tone and the dark. And we'll carry some of this color up here. Oh man, that looks good. And just because I got some on the brush, I'm going to do that. There. I like it. So far. <laughs>